we obviously all saw the bridge, uh, the Kerch Bridge to Crimea, uh, partially destroyed by explosions um, on Saturday. Today, when we're recording, we've we've just seen Putin's retaliation, and it's not pretty. Um, so, I'm interested. I mean, Crimea is. So obviously something that matters enormously to him. It's a point of pride. He's responded quickly and violently with missile strikes across Ukrainian cities. Why is Crimea so important? Why does he feel his prestige is bound up in it? And why did that bridge attack uh, hit him hard? Why did it hurt? Sure. Well, uh, the the last part of your question is easy enough to to, to answer in the sense that it, it really was the prestige accomplishment, as he sees it, of of his regime mm. to, to connect Russia back to Crimea physically, in a way that it hadn't been previously. Although, of course, they had the, the naval base uh, um, uh, that they rented, so to speak. Um, but yes, Crimea is absolutely crucial. Uh, my book starts in 2016 with the opening of um, this hideous kitsch nationalist monument to Grand Prince Vladimir, or Volodymyr, as the Ukrainians would call him, the ruler of uh, late 10th century Kievan Rus, who converted for himself and his people to Christianity. And he did so in the Crimea, in a place called Hersonesis, which is just outside Sevastopol. Um, and this, uh, for Putin, was, uh, as he said in that speech on the opening of the monument, the, big, the foundation of the modern Russian state. Um, the, um, uh, the patriarch Kirill, who was very much behind this project as well, um, argues that, you know, in taking on Christianity for his people, it it, it was the found foundation of the, the Rus or Russian civilization. Mm. Now, of course, for the Ukrainians, this is absolute nonsense because they, as they said at the time, had their own monument, albeit built in 1853 under mm. the Russian Empire, and they would see uh, th th that entry into Byzantium which effectively is what happened with the conversion to Christianity mm. as the foundation of a modern Ukrainian European state. Mm. In other words, we elected to join Byzantium. That was our a window onto, onto Europe. Mm. So there are two conflicting foundation myths here. And in a sense, you could root the war to a tussle over whose foundation myth is mm. is true. Mm. I don't think either is true, actually. I think mm. the truth about Kievan Rus is that it was a multi-ethnic, open, steppe territory with all sorts of people roaming across it, and ethnicity didn't really connect the people of, of, of Kievan Rus to anything that one could trace to the modern day. But as foundation myths, they're terribly important because they both root the foundation of their nations to Crimea. Mm. And for the Russians, it's particularly important because of that Christian civilization that begins there. Mm. It's also important, I think, for Russia in a more modern context because it's you know, a place where so many people in the Soviet Union, went on holiday. Mm. It's a great resort. It's a hot, it's the South. It's the good life of summer. It's also um, the seat of the Black Sea fleet in mm -hmm. Sevastopol. So that's absolutely crucial to have that for Russia, that access to the Black Sea and the ability to, to dominate the Near East, which they had uh, with uh, Sevastopol from, from the late 18th century, really. And um, I'd say also it's terribly important to Russia because um, it sort of connects Russia to to Europe in itself in a way mm. that it couldn't really claim other than through Crimea because it's 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 Crimea that made Russia a black uh, a black sea power mm. gave it access to the Mediterranean 
Um, so it's it's really quite fundamental to the Russian sense of their historic roots, but also their Europeanness. Mm. Mm. So for all those reasons, I think it's a sort of it's a red line for 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 Putin in his conception of the origins of Russia in his conception of what Russia is. Mm. Um, and so I think if, if this war gets to become a, a sort of fight over Crimea itself, as the, as the bombing of the, of the bridge suggests it might, if it goes on from being simply a, you know, a, an attack on the logistics of the Russian army, if, it, if the Ukrainians want to take back their borders mm. to 1991, pre the 2014 invasion. And if NATO is prepared to back them to that point, I think we're going to get into a very dangerous area mm. of escalation. I wouldn't be surprised if if it was a question, say, of Ukrainian troops actually marching into Crimea. Mm. I think at that point, Putin would probably resort to tactical nuclear weapons if he's exhausted all the other mm. escalatory measures he can still take. Because it, it it's an attack on Russian soil. It's uh, it's an attack on Russian soil, but it's I mean, yeah, he's declared the the annexed territories Russian yeah. soil. But it's more than that. It's an attack on the Russian soul. Right. Yeah. That's how Putin mm. would see it. Your your description of the two foundational myths, the the, the f- Features editor in in me is is just thinking sort of Vlad versus Vlad. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I, I I I avoided that cliche. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why you're a historian and I'm a journalist. But um, d- d- the Ukrainians obviously want Crimea back. I mean that they've been quite explicit about that. Indeed. Uh, clearly, we assumed that that attack was by them and was an expression of that desire. Um, what 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 does it mean to them? How important is is that is is Ukrainian desire for Crimea a relatively new thing? Because after twenty fourteen, there wasn't didn't seem like there was that much of a move to, to actually realistically take Crimea back. Certainly not from the international community. Uh, do they also feel that it is foundational to to their identity, an identity that is still is evolving in front of our eyes, or? Is is that quite a new thing that, that they care so Good deeply question. about Crimea? Yeah. Well, I mean, there wasn't much effort after 2014 because the Ukrainian army was very weak. Sure. The regime was very weak. And because the West basically was very weak in its response to the annexation. Mm. Um, since then, there's been quite a bit of NATO investment in Ukraine, which is part of the problem for Russia. Um, because they see NATO turning Ukraine into a sort of anti-Russia, as mm. Putin put it in that essay I referred to. But for, I think for the Ukrainians, it's a simple principled matter of the, this is the territory that is ours. This is our territorial integrity. Mm. This is what has been internationally yeah. recognised. This is what this is the security guarantees we supposedly had in the Budapest Memorandum of 1994. It's all everything about modern day Ukraine is based on the borders of. 1991 and so Crimea is is integral to that Mm. but um, I fear that it would be too late now for the Ukrainians to to get back Crimea partly because the West has been so sort of almost complicit really Mm. in in the annexation I mean I mean I was so I I mean I felt very strongly at the time um, having a particular investment in Crimea because I wrote a book on the Crimean war and Mm. uh, had already by that stage built connections with with Crimean Tatars and, and 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 other people in Crimea and felt very angry at the way the West just sort of accepted it as a fait accompli. Mm. Um, but, you know, since 2014, Ukrainian national identity has has strengthened immensely. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, Putin may say Ukrainians are not a nation, but, you know, boy, has he made them into one by, right. <laughs> by, by, by invading them again. And I think part of that national unity is an uncompromising determination to reclaim Crimea. Mm. Well, as I have already suggested, I'm not sure that's possible without nuclear war. Mm. And so at some point, I fear there's going to have to be um, a compromise. Mm. And the West will probably, I suspect, 
at some point have to start leaning on the Ukrainians to do what nobody wants to see them to do, but um, may become inevitable, which is trade land for peace. Mm. Certainly not uh, something they seem very keen to do at the moment. No, I mean, I think in that way, Zelensky's in a bit of a corner, really, mm. because the nationalist element you know, is now so universal in Ukraine. I mean, the Ukrainians yeah. I've spoken to, the idea that they might sort of give recognition that Crimea is now Russia or even that Donbass is now... I mean, this is something no one, I don't think, in Ukraine is prepared to accept. Mm. I mean, having said that, uh, I think that the occupied territories of Donbass contain a, a lot of people who are mainly old mm. because they've lived there all their lives and they don't have mobility and... They probably, you know, they say it's a shame that half the city was destroyed that they live in, but they, I don't think they feel that strongly about it because they just want to go on living their daily lives. And yeah. Most of them are Russian speakers. So they're not politicised about it in the way that younger Ukrainians are mm. or the Ukrainian nationalists are who completely understandably want Crimean back. And so take us a little bit back to the beginning. Why... Why does Ukraine play such a central role in the foundation of Russia? And and, and we've talked about Crimea, but, but Ukraine more generally. Um, and why is it that someone like Putin can co convincingly, at least internally, convincingly claim that Ukraine is Russia? Um, obviously, a lot of people there speak Russian, so that's one reason. But but take us back to some of the history you talk about this book. What, what is the story about Ukraine that Russia tells itself? The story that Putin tells the Russians, and it's the story that basically Russian imperial historiography told the Russians from the 18th century, is that Ukraine was little Russia. Ukraine was part of greater Russia. Um, it had a dialect, but not a language. Mm. Um, and its uh, capital, Kiev, was the foundation of modern Russia. But that was the first state. So um, it's a source of Russian civilization for the Russians, as well as a source of their Christianity. Mm. Um, and although for much of Russia's history, after the fall of Kievan Rus in 1240, when the Mongol occupation overturned Kiev and subjected most of Russia and about half of present-day Ukraine to Mongol rule, mm. indirect rule. Basically, they collected tribute. Yes. Um, and uh, f from that point in 1240, much of Ukraine actually took a different path from Russia. I mean, the Western territories uh, were brought into the orbit of Poland-Lithuania, mm. which is one of the great medieval states, um, uh, Catholic, uh, so that you have a number of Catholics in Western Ukraine. Um, but from the 17th century, Ukraine um, was brought back into the Russian fold because of the Cossacks, essentially. And the Cossacks were, uh, again, it, they're not particularly Ukrainian or particularly Russian. They're sort of multi-ethnic cast of, of warriors who, who, who carry out everything from brigandage to fighting for anyone who'll pay them. Mm. And they had their own sort of meta, uh, sort of quasi-states, really, uh, hetmanates in, in, in the area we now call Ukraine. So there was a hetmanate of uh, the, uh, of of Don Cossacks and Zaporizhia mm. Cossacks, and the Zaporizhian Cossacks uh, were fighting because they were Orthodox against Poland Lithuania and invited um, the Tsar to uh, support them. Well, the Tsar Alexei at this point, in we're talking about the 1640s, early 50s, was very reluctant to do that. But interestingly, it was the Patriarch Nikon who wanted. Uh, Russia to back this orthodox war fought by the Cossacks against the Poles and Lithuanians right. as a sort of holy war. So, I mean, I mean, this is quite, you know, resonant with what's happening today. I mean, because a major source behind this war is Patriarch Kirill, who would also mm. say that he has said that the, the invasion of Ukraine is, is a holy war. So it's from that point that, that, that Ukraine is brought back into Russian fold and under Catherine the Great is made 
a regular part of provincial administration. And she then leads the conquest of what becomes known as New Russia, which mm. are the areas that have just been annexed, minus the Donbass. So New Russia was all of the coastal area on the north, uh, on the northern littoral of the Black Sea, so from Odessa mm. through to Mariupol. And, and they were called New Russia until 1917. Mm. So that becomes another dispute about what is the place of Ukraine in Russia's legacy in in its territorial claims because you know under the soviet union it didn't really matter so much mm. where the boundaries were i mean the the idea of the soviet union was that the nation states were gone that you could have a cultural nation but otherwise you were all part of the same political entity mm. which was soviet so the Breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991 then raised a whole set of new issues about Ukraine because those southern areas of new Russia mm. and the Donbass were claimed by Russian nationalists like Solzhenitsyn, like Sobchak, who was Putin's mentor, as historic Russian lands. Mm. And so in that essay I, I referred back to from 2021, Putin makes the argument there that if Ukraine wants to wanted to leave the Soviet Union, as it voted to do so in 1991, then um, fine, but it should leave with what it came in with. Right. And there are two ways you can see that. You could say it came in with nothing because Ukraine didn't really exist mm. as a nation state, although there were two moments, but, you know, very brief moments in the revolution and the civil war when there were Ukrainian parliamentary and then nationalist governments in situ, but they didn't last very long. Or you could say they should have what they had minus New Russia mm. and, the, and the Donbass. So one way of looking at Putin's sort of strategy is to say he's trying to reclaim those historic Russian lands. But, you know, he hasn't really made clear what his war aims are or why he's fighting. He began with the whole question of it's a historically justified war because Ukraine is is uh, is us. Ukraine mm. is just a variant of Russians and so should belong to us. He's then moved on from that to argue, and this I think is is more... I think this is closer to his real thinking. He argues in that essay that every time Ukraine, after the middle of the 17th century, it was reincorporated into the Russian mm. world, if you like. Every time that the little Russians, as he would call them, tried to break free from the great Russians, the Russians, uh, to assert their independence, they fell under the influence of hostile Western powers. Mm. So he cites the Poles and the Lithuanians in the in the 18th century, the Austrians in the 19th century, the Germans in the First World War, the Allied powers in the Russian Civil War, the Nazis in the Second mm. World War, then NATO today, he would say, they've all been doing the same thing, which is encouraging Ukrainian nationalism to turn Ukraine against Russia. And that has, to come back to your question in a rather long-winded way, <laughs> that has real resonance with with many Russians mm. who've been brought up on this story of Russia, taught in schools, embedded in Russian historiography, and since then pumped out through every propaganda channel, film, TV, books, novels, and the whole lot, that um, that Ukraine is, that, that Russia is, is vulnerable to attack mm. from the West. And and Ukraine is its most vulnerable point, and and this sense that the Ukrainians sort of can't really be trusted to, to, yeah. to not be under the sort of aegis of of Russia in some way. Yeah, because I, yeah, I mean, it's sort of I, I, it's not it's hard to tell how Putin would actually explain all of that mm. because the implication of his essay is and, and everything he's he's argued is that they that they they have a sort of illusory nationalism, mm. an illusory sense of their nationhood which has been all pumped up for them by 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 enemies of Russia in the yes. west. Um and uh, but on the other hand, you know, there there are many other ways one could explain that. Mm. So it's not clear exactly where he comes from on that.